I am Thijs Rauman, Hasso Plattner Institute. Our software tool, Curve Canceler, allows modifying cutting plans so that they not only work when fabricated on the laser cutter they were designed for, but also on other machines that remove much more or much less material. The most interesting models made with laser cutting are models with mechanisms, such as this bearing, which holds an axle in place. To make this possible, the designer carefully tuned the size of the cutout, so as to precisely hold the axle in place. This tuning, however, tends to get lost when somebody fabricates the same model on a different machine. Let's look at what happens when we add more curve. The axle wobbles in the bearing, which causes the pinion to fail to engage with the rack and the slider to misalign as a result. So while people can download this model from the internet, ultimately it turns out to be useless as it simply does not work when fabricated elsewhere. One way to solve this is to let users input their curve into an editor and export a 2D cutting plan accordingly. Software systems like FlatFlap and Cube enable such workflow. With SpringFit, we made press fit joints and mounts curve tolerant using cantilever springs. In this paper, we extend that idea by also handling loose fit, such as the bearing we've seen before. We achieve that by inserting such crescent shaped insets. This is how they work. We jam the inset in place, which then holds the bearing with just the right fit. We call these mechanisms curve cancelling mechanisms. Mechanisms with an additional inset that maintain their functionality independent of the curve of the machine they are fabricated on. We've made a range of mechanisms curve cancelling such as bearings as we just saw, sliding mechanisms, and mechanisms that have to engage with one another, like a pair of gears. To understand how exactly this works, let me explain it at the example of the bearing. The curve cancelling bearing consists of two designed elements, the jammer and the inverse scaler. If we look at the jammer in isolation, we see that the shape of the outside is a nautilus spiral. We place an inset with the same shape inside that cutout. But Curve makes that inset smaller. We can still lock the inset in place by rotating it because of the self-similarity of the Nautilus spiral. This makes the inset lock in place depending on the amount of curve applied to the model. The inverse scalar, in turn, holds the axle in place. The shape of the inverse scalar is the same as that of the jammer, but flipped. So as more curve results in more rotation of the jammer, the inverse scalar now narrows down the cutout by exactly the same amount, which results in a bearing of consistent size, even with increasing amounts of curve. We also modified this slider to become curve cancelling. The slit of the slider gets wider because of curve, resulting in a loose carriage. We solve this by adding springs next to the slit and inserting two jammers to jam it in place. This narrows down the slit by exactly the amount of material removed due to curve. The last curve related problem is the pinion that failed to engage with the rack. So the problem is the same as with a pair of gears. The teeth got smaller and therefore further away from one another. While we cannot quite insert additional geometry in the teeth themselves, what we can do is bring the gears closer to one another so they still engage with each other. We achieve that by taking the standard bearing and adding a spring around it. We place a wedge next to it which pushes the spring sideways by exactly one time curve. By repeating the same with the other gear, both gears move exactly by the amount of material that was removed from their teeth. 
resulting in gears that engage well, like what you see here in this multi-stage gearbox. So these mechanisms combined allow me to make that microscope work independent of the amount of curve applied to the mechanisms. Let's look at how our software tool Curve Canceler achieves that. Curve Canceler runs in the browser, uses just load to SVG file right into the editor. When the file is loaded, Curve Canceler analyzes the geometry in the model to determine what are contours in the model. Given that the contours are typically not part of the mechanisms themselves, Curve Canceler grays them out to put the focus on the actual mechanisms. Curve Canceler then guessed what mechanisms go where based on circular cutouts in the model. The 2D cutting plan does not contain all the information required to completely reconstruct which mechanisms go where. Curve Canceler therefore relies on user input to get all the mechanisms in place. These, for example, are not bearings but glare holes where you look through in the microscope. And this big one here just holds a petri dish in place instead of being a bearing itself. So let me just remove those incisions with the remove mechanism tool. I can use group convert to convert multiple dimensions of the same size at the same time. The next piece of information that is not included in the 2D cutting plan is which bearings hold the gear in place. By using the gear tool, the user can place the gear in the right location. Finally, the sliding mechanism is also not cast ahead of time by Curve Canceler. Sliding mechanisms typically manifest themselves as rectangular cutouts, but are relatively rare. If Curve Canceler would turn every rectangular cutout into a sliding mechanism, it would result in a lot of false positives. Therefore, Curve Canceler relies on users to place these sliding mechanisms in the model using the sliding tool. Right now, Curve Canceler has converted all mechanisms to Curve Canceling equivalents. And given that we've been editing an SVG file all along, we can send the file right to the laser cutter to produce the microscope. Finally, by calling the headless implementation of SpringFit, Curve Canceler converts the microscope to a completely portable model. We evaluate our system by comparing the amount of friction and play of our bearings to plane bearings, which are simple circular cutouts in a plate, while varying the amount of curve of the cut. When looking at the bearing performance, we see that the curve cancelling bearings are stable across variations in curve. Only at the point where the curve of our laser cutter is the same as the amount of curve that we added to the model, does the plane bearing outperform the curve cancelling equivalent. Which makes sense, because this is a bearing that is optimized for the machine at hand. We see similar results when looking at the amount of play. The curve cancelling bearings stayed consistent as the curve varied while the play in the plane bearing increased linearly with the amount of curve. In conclusion, spring fit allowed us to make press fit joints and mounts tolerant to curve variations. Curve canceler extends this by also tackling loose fit. My goal is to make models for laser cutting portable and portability in the context of laser cutting is a measure of how easily a laser cutting model can be transferred from one laser cutting environment to another.
A laser cutting environment consists of all the parameters that influence the quality of the resulting cut, which is the laser cutter itself, the material, and the thickness of that material. The combination of curve canceller and spring fit allow me to take models with any fit and make them work on any laser cutter. To understand the implications of this, let's look at a field in which we understood portability really well. Here's a great piece of assembler code that allows me to play a tone on my machine. But in order for this to work, it writes to machine-specific registers and it writes to machine-specific ports. Only somebody with the exact same hardware setup would be able to use this piece of code. Here is a piece of Python code that does the same thing. The great thing of this code is that it reuses an underlying C library that has an implementation for different operating systems. These operating systems in turn handle the calling to the actual hardware, in this case a speaker. So this script is very portable. Portability in the context of computer science made source code valuable as it can now be shared and used by others. A prerequisite for more advanced collaboration, such as remixing or modifying models made by others. I think that by enabling the same transition towards portability in the context of fabrication, we can truly stand on the shoulders of giants and truly increase the complexity of what the community makes. Thank you for your attention.